My name is Andrea Picard and I'm one of the programmers here. And it is such a thrill and honor to be presenting Le Livre d'Image, the image book by legendary Jean-Luc Godard as part of our master's program. To begin, we would like to acknowledge that tonight's event is taking place on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of New Credit and the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Ashnabe, and the Huron-Wendat. We are grateful to have the opportunity to work in their community. This film is eligible for the Grosch People's Choice Award. Please vote for your films at tiff.net slash vote. And how fabulous would it be for Godard to win at TIFF? Um, I can't vote because I work here, so it was a hint. Uh, we would like to thank Kino Lorber and Wild Bunch for providing us with this film this evening. And we would also like to extend a warm thank you to Uni France for their generous support. Now, I think uh, for many of you, Jean-Luc Godard does not uh, require an introduction. He has changed uh, the history of cinema. He is a genius, a legend, and he's still young in some ways. He keeps uh, revolutionizing the language of cinema. This film premiered earlier this year at the Cannes Film Festival in competition, and it won a special Palme d'Or. And it was the first time that this award was given at the festival, and the jury made it very clear that it wasn't a Lifetime Achievement Award, and that's something that you could understand. Godard is 87, and uh, his filmography is unlike anyone else's. But they really wanted to single out the film in saying that it couldn't be judged vis-a-vis uh, -vis the other films. It was really in a league of its own, and I, I agree with that statement. Uh, it's an essayistic salvo about cinema, about art, about today's complicated world, elusive histories, and also national histories, but also about putting one's faith in art, I think, despite both the violence and the beauty of representation. It's brilliant in my mind, it's intellectual, it's, it's a film that makes us work and think and grasp. Uh, it includes citations uh, from literature, and he quotes paintings. It very much is a painting in some ways also. It's slightly willfully obscure in the best possible of ways, and it's, it relates to his opus, Histoire du cinéma, if you saw that long-standing work, uh, which is also an encyclopedic essay on cinema. But it also is very filled with sensual pleasures, so it's not a harsh work in any ways. It is full of inventiveness, joy, and also tinges of melancholy. It feels like a profoundly intimate work, um, and you'll be enveloped by Godard's voice. I think you'll feel very close to him in the way that he uses sound in this work. I find it endless, endlessly stimulating, challenging, inspiring, and ultimately moving as great poetry is. And now at 87 years old, Godard is not traveling much, although there was a time where he did promise me a tennis match, but that time might have passed. Um, but I've improved. <laughs> We are thrilled and honored to have one of his closest collaborators here with us this evening, Fabrice Aragno, who is one of the, uh, the film's producers, but he also has worked on so many roles on this work. And he's been working with Godard for a number of years, and he played instrumental parts in Film Socialisme and Adieu au Langage, which you probably saw last, his 3D work. So please uh, give a warm wel welcome to Fabrice Aragno. Merci, merci. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope that someone record what you said because your introduction was to give to Jean-Luc. Uh, <laughs> it would be, I don't know if someone record. Yes, there is. I hope <laughs> that I will give. So thank you for your introduction. Uh, I won't give not more introduction, just the thing that um, we are in an English part of the world and uh, Jean-Luc wanted to 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 make the, tra the translation himself and those so the subtitling that you will because the film is in french uh, for for the most uh, part it's a, uh, a few arabs a few a few english but for the french part he, he wanted to to make the, tra the traduction and the, um, the subtitling and he took um, one or two weeks each day uh, Making a concentration of the of the text French in few words, and he translates himself with a dictionary, words by words, and um, and that's uh, the subtitling that you will have here. It's a, a Jean-Luc uh, way of uh, subtitling, and it's like maybe it's like a long poem because you have just 
some words. Sometimes there is more, but sometimes less. And then you can uh, travel, uh, uh, make a journey inside the film. So I let uh, we let you with the film with, uh, and the sound. And, uh, and Fabrice it. will be here after the screening to answer questions. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Enjoy the screening. Bonne séance. And in the introduction, Andrea talked about how close a collaborator you are with Jean-Luc Godard. I was wondering if you could provide some context to what that is. I believe it started with Notre Musique, and it has evolved over the years. Yes, yes, it was um, yes Notre Musique in 2002. And I beginning as uh, he asked me to help him to to do the location. We say production uh, assistant. I don't know the name in English, but uh, to organize a little uh, the 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 set for the the part the paradise part uh, of Notre Music, and letting me doing what how I wanted to do and. Uh, 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 for, well, he, he was not um, uh, sad of my work, I think. Uh, and what was interesting is that when I meet him, it, it's, well, we don't have a lot of time though, because I could speak hours and hours of, uh, <laughs> of uh, uh, how it, it is to work with Jean-Luc. But um, what is incredible, but when I meet him for the first time, it was that uh, it was not anymore the Godard that everyone tell me. The legend, the, also Andrea speak a little like this. But when I see him, just a man. So there is Godard and there is Jean-Luc. For me, uh, when I meet him, I begin to work with Jean-Luc uh, in a very small way of doing things um, sin sincerely and simply with, with hands, in fact, as uh, the beginning of the film. So, um, uh, yes for making the production, helping him to do the production. I'm also uh, one of the US sol sol soldiers in the end of, <laughs> of uh, Notre Music. <laughs> well, but, uh, and then from Film Socialism, he asked me again to do, uh, and there was already Jean-Paul Batagia. It's important because we are three. But there, there is Nicole Brenes also, we are four, but mostly we are three, Jean-Luc, Jean-Paul and me, to do everything. And in, uh, for Film Socialism, Jean-Paul called me back to, to do the production also, the organization for maybe some locations. And in 2010, no, it was in 2008, it was the beginning of the high definition everywhere. High definition, uh, fine, it's an American thing. Huh? But wanted to sell everywhere the, your new high definition camera, the new high definition flat TV and stuff. So he wanted maybe to, he didn't know if he wanted to do the film in 35 or in HD for film socialism and uh, he had to uh, buy a small camera and uh, HD you know like the camera made for um, the father or the mother uh, they brought to film the children no? not the uh, film school cameras that you learn you have to use a good professional camera just like this and he asked me if I could use it to try to use it because the buttons were too small when they say okay I can try but I have no problem with techniques, in fact, I'm, it's like a play. And I test the camera, and the camera was uh, no quality. It's if I look that camera as a professional of the profession, you know, with uh, the, the gamma range, with the definition, with the... With the nah, 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 nah. So I said, well, it's not camera, I don't know. But I push the camera to the, to the extreme point, uh, and then... It was not anymore HD, high definition. It was, I don't know what definition, but it becomes something interesting. It becomes to come a little like painting, like fauvism, you know, if a, the color will, will, will arrive. So it was some, uh, you know what I mean? It was like, you know, really the defects of the camera were more interesting. And I show the test that I did to Jean-Luc and I said, uh, this camera has no quality, but uh, his defect has more interest than the, the quality that this camera don't have. And then it was interesting that uh, that idea. He asked me to do the image, and then um, and then on film socialism we we go on film on the boat, and then I do the sound also and the image. 
Vaidu, uh, uh, it's a camera making the image, it's a microphone making the image, and the pre-amplificator, the Swiss Sonosax pre-amplificator, who made the sound, in fact. Postage was just preparing the microphone, making rec, preparing the camera, putting the, the whole lenses that I wanted to use on film socialism. And then uh, Goodbye to Language, but it was uh, for the 3D, so I tried stuff in 3D. Um, and you actually made the camera, right? Yes, yes, yes. Because we, we brought camera... Uh, professional Jean-Luc said no no you have to go to do it well you have to do uh, to buy the very professional we have to keep to to try so we bought a very expensive camera for me it was very expensive uh, Panasonic 3D camera and this camera had no 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 defect and no quality but you can push it to the to the extreme but nothing it was just like like a uh, Pisseux, quoi. Like, uh, well, no, co no contrast, nothing. You, you could do the film in 2D because you don't see the 3D. So it was not interesting. So the idea was to reuse what we discover in film socialism, but in 3D. And for this, I had to build. Uh, and building, when you do yourself, you're free because you can do everything. You can separate the two eyes. You can. Uh, and for example, here we play with the sound. For example, when you, you're alone and when you, you touch yourself the buttons, you can do. Uh, yes, what you want. And with the Sorry, image book, speak lot, huh? <laughs> uh, with the image book, with a film that is so predominantly made up of archival footage, yeah. uh, how did that uh, working dynamic uh, sort of function? I know you created some original images, and maybe you can yeah, tell us about those. But mostly, it comes from other films or yeah. other clips. But mostly, it's um, yeah, the, the few footage at the end, uh, the, the Arabic part. Uh, I see like uh, National Geographic footage with <laughs> sunset and uh, sunrise and on the sea. Uh, well, okay, I did this image. It's not, I cannot say uh, uh, a big work uh, on the image on this film. But it was more to help him to, it was more, the techniques will be more on the edit, but on the edit machine. Because he had it, the same thing on Goodbye to Language and Film Society, he had it on videotapes. He never used a computer. Uh, I have the computer, so I made a translation between his rough edit and and then the film uh, for film socialism goodbye to language and this one but for this one the the tapes were not anymore uh, i had a, a, a lot of difficulty to find the tapes the um, dv cam tapes it's not anymore in switzerland i have to to buy some in uh, here enfin, in north america some in France, but now I think there is not anymore. Uh, that don't exist anymore. I had to buy some machine because the machine was com uh, becoming uh, um, extinct. Broke. Yeah, yeah. I, I I used two two old machines to make one working, so it uh, like this. Um, and the work was also to to help him to to edit and to think about the film. And but it's very concrete. <laughs> For example, it was uh, building the bookshelf. I already speak this, <laughs> but uh, it's a way of writing a script of this bookshelf, the IKEA bookshelf uh, called Ivar. I make. I know. I. <laughs> but I have no money from uh, from IKEA. I, I'm I'm stupid for this. I think I could uh, ask them a lot of money with Jean-Luc. Huh? Also with uh, with uh, a, um, what I was talking. Ah, yes, about Ivar. No, but it's useful. This kind. It's not very expensive. It's wood like this, and you can put shelf how you want. And it's good because w he did the script. Uh, in fact, it's really true. He, he he did the first image of the script was a photograph of the bookshelf, with I with each sequences was uh, a shelf. The first, the second, the two, the fifth, and the Arabs. The, like the sex, the sex, the sixième, quoi. And, uh, uh, for, yeah, for example, uh, this was uh, the work. And then, at the end, uh, the, uh, there was a production problem that the producer want uh, France uh, don't have any more money to, to, to do the film, so he, he bring, he take back the film. And he, he gave it to me for nothing to with the charge of finding the money for finishing the film. So I produced the film at the end. Uh, well. Questions in the audience? Yes. Sorry, I speak a lot. Yes, go ahead. Quite 
question is about whether or not John Luke has a encyclopedic mind uh, for all these images, or if there's a lot of research that goes into assembling it. Both. He asked us, me, Jean-Paul. Jean-Paul lives in Paris the, uh, for finding some DVDs, copies, prints. Uh, it's easier. And Nicole Brenez. Uh, she's a very well uh, archaeologue, a historian of cinema and archaeologue. We, we called her the archaeologue. Um, for example, he, he asked us to find some films uh, that he knew already. And, and also, uh, for example, for the trains, the, the chapter two, no, three, um, uh, with all this chapter about trains, but he, he asked Nicole and Nicole, um, found, uh, she know every, every, every film. So <laughs> everything. So she, she found some whole, the Russian, there was also a Bernard Eisenschitz, very specialist of, for the Russian films for the Soviet era. So he, they bring some copy and they carry it to Jean-Luc and Jean-Luc had, uh, I know to see we said uh, thousands of films, more than Thierry Frémo for the selection of Cannes, maybe more than you <laughs> to do the to do the film. So you see a lot of films for the for the last uh, uh, um, L'Heureux Arabie. Uh, I brought uh, all the films from Maroc, Algeria, uh, Tunisia, also also Perse Persport, uh, Iran, um, Lebanon. Uh, he see a lot of film, a lot, a lot of, and he loves watching films, so it's not a problem. But he, he that way. So, so another hand in the middle. Yes. What machine or program do you use to edit? What machine or program do you use to edit? Alors, the machine, the, the edit, really, the, the edit. My, I try to, to. I try. No, it was yes. I try because I always try. To, to keep the rough edit of Jean-Luc, because and it's most like this here, uh, because he's like a painter, really. He, 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 uh, for example, at the beginning, the, at uh, the beginning of the chapter two, Les Soirées de Saint-Petersbourg, uh, when the sound goes from the front to the back, uh, at the moment there is a, like a long traveling uh, with Russian, in fact, it's a um, Russian film, uh, Guerre et Paix, G uh, War and Peace, from Bondarchuk. And you see people uh, walking, entering in uh, like a, a, ball, a ballet uh, room. In a, uh, but he used a old machine called um, Guiston. It's a French uh, uh, engineer who built this machine in the late 90s. It was just for the TV, for, for helping uh, signal for the TV. You know, the standard efficient TV, the, the cathodic tube TV. Huh? And he pushed it to the, to the extreme, making like, then the, the signal, you will see the signal making. <laughs> okay. Uh, this I keep because uh, uh, I try to redo with footage, uh, maybe more. Uh, I found the Blu-ray of, of this film, for example, to try to, to redo. But uh, no, I cannot redo this. It's so it's perfect like this. But it's so I I try to keep all uh, what he did. So he worked on uh, DV cam tapes and uh, what you call you want. It's D Sony DSR two thousand. <laughs> he has two, two. Uh, we brought five, but just two works uh, until the end. Um, but there is a lot of little s things incredible because I buy to, yes, I know we don't have time, but I continue. Uh, <laughs> no, it's my life also. Uh, no, it's strange because his first film, his first film before Breathless, before La, the short film was uh, Operation Beton. It was a, like a documentary on the construction of, uh, of um, a barrage for the water, to, to stop the water to make electricity in Switzerland, in the mountain. Operation Beton, and there is a lot of beton, dam. you know, I don't know how to say it in English, the dam. The dam? The dam, right. And the producer was Actua Film in Geneva. Well, okay, we forget Actua Film. And at the end, I just brought the last DV cam DSR 2000 Sony in a place in Geneva, it was Actua Film. So it was right, Actua Film, you see, no, it's incredible. My first film produced, and then <laughs> my last film is, well. And then I use uh, Da Vinci Resolve <laughs> on the computer. I think I saw another hand somewhere. Yes, go ahead. How did John Luke pitch this film to you? <laughs> you know, for him, I say, if, if, I don't know if you know what is 
uh, pitch. We, I I say not it's, it's pitch is stupid. It's like pshit you know, when you pshit session. You should uh, name the in festival when they want to. It's hard because for me I am trying to make my own film also, and I have to pitch. I <laughs> no, so I'm, well, well, I try because um, yeah, in this world uh, today we make pitch. Um, but he made, he made, in fact, he made in over exactly how to do it. It was, it was after Goodbye to Language, we were unmounting. So every, every time we finished the film, we unmount everything, the bookshelf, the, the machine, all stuff. And we put on cart on, on boxes before he wanted to put it on the, on the, on the trash. But no, I, I keep in my, in my studio, <laughs> the things. Uh, but we were cleaning the ending of cleaning the the little place where we did the the mix of uh, good battle language in his house in Roll, and it was just between two two doors. Uh, you know when we you begin to speak when in in between two doors you know uh, like like this. I had nothing to write, nothing to record, nothing, and he just say and we asked him uh, with Jean Paul who was uh, the three Jean Paul uh, Jean Luc and me, what uh, what will be the next. And you say, oh, well, it could be a film, uh, it could be uh, the first chapter, we can do something with the remake, and the second, it can be with, you know, Joseph de Mestre, uh, uh, in Saint-Petersbourg, uh, Soirée de Saint-Petersbourg, and then it can be uh, something on the train with... Uh, with an, uh, and he explains the film in, uh, yes, in five minutes. He, he made like a pitch, but it's not a pitch, it's just when a friend asks you, What's your project? When you say your project, but uh, so he made the pitch. In fact, <laughs> we have time for just one last question. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be sorry. Yes, on the side. Go ahead. Can you talk about the purpose ah. of the blank screens? Blank mean black? Yeah. But in fact, it's not black. You see, it's not black because it's gray. Because the black in cinema don't exist because it's a white screen. Um, it's about light. And What's the meaning of blank screen? The same thing of the silence. It's... Um, I we never, we never try... We never... No, we really, really, with Jean-Luc, we never speak about meaning of things. Um... I have a lot of meaning inside. If I push all my 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 imagine imaginaire imagination, it's an image book, film <laughs> imaginaire. I no, sorry, I don't. I mean, I, <laughs> perhaps it could be like the you know negative space between stanzas of of a poem or, or something like this. Yeah, yes, but it's not that also, and it's also. For example, in the beginning, there is a the nice scene of uh, Johnny Guitar with Tell Me Lies, uh, I Don't Love You, etc. Uh, don't Tell Me Lies, tell that uh, I love you. Uh, well, and the soldier just, be, just after, but before there is Johnny Guitar. And normally, the sequence, you have the man. There is uh, the woman, uh, for the, uh, the actress, uh, the name is... Joan Crawford. <laughs> and, and then the man, and then again the woman. And... He begin like this, and at the time he just made a, a blank, <laughs> just to to get away the man. What's the meaning? I don't know. We, you imagine you can be yourself. I don't know. Um, I feel like that actually might be an appropriate note to go out on. Uh, thank you so much, Fabrice, for being with us here in Toronto. Okay. Okay. Thank you for coming to the film and enjoy the last weekend of the festival. And if you have a serious question, I can maybe answer seriously. <laughs> I will be outside. Uh, I can. Thank you. Ah, the theater is very well. Huh? Thank you to thank you to the people making this uh, this theater. No, really, really. Thank you. Thank you.